Ken Bougoul is the pen name of the acclaimed and influential Senegalese woman writer Marie Tu Mbai Bileoma and means in the Wolof language, one who is unwanted. She is one of the most renowned authors in Francophone African literature. Her writings are also some of the most disputed due to her controversial positions on social issues. She is the author of 10 novels published to date, the first being Le Bao Bafou in 1983 and the most recent titled Cacophonie, published in 2014. In 1999, she was awarded the Grand Prix Littéraire d'Afrique Noire for her third novel, Riwan ou le Chemin de Sable. In addition to the theme of women conditions in Africa, her works also deal with politics and migration. In her writing, she calls for a collective awareness of oppressed African people who can no longer language, languish in lethargy and feed on endless illusions. The title of her lecture today is Migration and Politics in Africa. In addition to discussing these topics, she will address how she includes these themes in her works as an artist writer. Please join me in welcoming Ken Bougoul. Good morning or afternoon? <laughs> yeah, just afternoon. Uh, bonjour, tout le monde. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very happy to be here and uh, very glad uh, to be among uh, the students and uh, the, your directors and teachers and uh, friends. I'm very impressed. <laughs> And uh, I'm very happy to be in Utah because it is, it is one of the states in America I want to visit, Utah, Wyoming, and Montana. So this year, Utah. I hope next time, Wyoming uh, and Montana, just for the landscape, the mountains, the stones. I like nature and the environment. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, fortunately, there is a... Uh, no mountain, if not, I'm not going to talk, I'll watch the mountains, but uh, so I'm going uh, to watch you. So my English is not very good, but anyway, as what I'm talking about is something I'm feeling deeply in, in me and something uh, from Africa, I'm living in Africa, and uh, I'm very happy living in Africa, facing all the situation, all the issues by the everyday uh, struggle, because we are always struggling. I used to say that we, in Africa, we don't have problems. We, are, we use our time looking for solutions. So this is a, a dynamic in struggling every day for finding solutions instead of uh, crying on a, uh, no, 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 no. People say, well, how do you do in Africa? You are poor, you are this and that. I say, oh boy, yeah. we, we don't <laughs> realize that you are poor because you are busy finding solution and struggling and enjoying still. One moment of life, one second, one hour, one day, every moment is important. So to be in the process of enjoying each moment as if it is the last one, make uh, the things very dynamic and, and I'm very happy for that way of life. And last time I was in uh, Germany, I was telling to the people that probably we are not looking for being developed country like Europe or European countries or like America. We just want to be just... Um, not too much, because the day I'm going to be in a developed country in Africa, uh, I will lose a lot of, um, um, uh, how do you, can you call that, uh, to be involved in uh, being uh, uh, ready for any moment, uh, and looking for solutions. But if I have everything, I'm just going maybe to bore myself. So I'm very happy to live in Africa. <laughs> So when we are talking about migration and politics in Africa, it's a big issue. So I'm just going to give you an overview because if you want to talk about it, we need um, maybe two, three, four, five sessions because Africa is a very big continent. And from the north to the south, eastern side and western side, uh, and uh, Sub-Sahara Africa in the Sahel, completely different from the Western side. You have Central Africa. So it's a big, huge uh, world. It's a world. Africa is a world. Because even a country is a world. 
uh, so if you have 54, uh, we don't know sometimes if you are 53, 54, or 55 because of South Sudan and uh, in Somali, some of them, they say we are a country, so we are lost. Let us say 55. <laughs> so the problem of migration, usually in Africa, in the old days, before the... Um, colonizers came, even before that, because we, the first colonization we have in Africa was coming from the Middle East and Arabic world, uh, with, uh, with Islam leaving Arabia along the north of Sahel, uh, the north of Africa, up to Spain, and another part came down through the desert up to the northern uh, uh, Sahel countries, uh, Mauritania, Senegal, you have it in Mali, uh, Niger, uh, where you find most more Muslims than if you travel to Central Africa, for example. They did not go further because of uh, uh, natural obstacles like lakes or rivers or mountains or forests uh, or whatever. But uh, in the Sahel region, those uh, uh, countries close to the Sahara, the, invasion of uh, uh, Arabics, but with religion, with Islam. Before they came, we used to live uh, to enjoy life uh, because we had, uh, we were living uh, sometimes, I say, into, brat into bracket primitive lives, but I like a primitive life. It is not that means that we are wild people or we are in the forest like the lion and no. It is just enjoying if you are hungry, there is a fruit, you eat the fruit, you are thirsty, you have natural water, you, you take it uh, just to live uh, simply, uh, but good. But when we start having these people coming in Africa, the, our problems started at that time. And then, uh, uh, with the colonization, the, what we, the inheritance we have from the, the worst, I think, we have with the colonization from uh, English people, from French people, Dutch people, German uh, up to the first, uh, the Second World War, not too much German, Italian up to Ethiopia, etc., Libya, Ethiopia, uh, but mainly English, French, uh, uh, mainly, and uh, in um, they decided in the end of uh, 19th century uh, uh, for their own purpose. I don't know where they were sitting somewhere in a European uh, city, in an office, and uh, uh, they took Africa like a cake to just to share it among the colonizers. Uh, so. France, yes, me, Senegal, Mali, Niger, uh, Burkina Faso, uh, Chad, uh, up to Congo Brazzaville, and six, 16 countries were colonized by France. And then we have England uh, in sub saharan Africa, in Ghana, in Nigeria, um, Kenya, uh, and then the rest of uh, Africa up to South Africa. And when they started now designing the countries and making borders, it is where we started really having a problem of board borders because they uh, did their own borders according to their own interests and like children saying, no, give me more, no, take this, no, I like this one, no, this one is for you. And then they were just uh, uh, like the children uh, in front of... Uh, of a cake or something like that. And this is, this, the problem is it brought particularly, uh, uh, in, you see in Senegal, Mali, Guinea, uh, we have the same uh, people living in different countries. For example, we have a rebellion in the south of Senegal in Casamance, and that rebellion is lasting since the 80s, and it is difficult uh, to, 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 to solve the, the problem of the rebellion because the people of Casamance, uh, half of them, the origins is from Guinea-Bissau. You have the Balant, the Balant people are shared between the south of Senegal and the other part is in, uh, in, uh, in, in Guinea-Bissau. You see, for example, I was living in Togo during five years. In Togo, in Benin, 
you see the people, they are traveling uh, from Togo to Benin, Benin to bury people. So when you are at the border of Benin and Togo, you see, uh, how do you say, when, when a dead person, pers uh, the coffins, la, le oh, yes, <coughs> uh, uh, crossing the border because somebody died in uh, Togo, but the village is in Benin, and somebody uh, dies in Benin. No, the village in in Togo, and this come from the house of European people sitting in Berlin. I think it was in Berlin, just uh, uh, traces the borders of the countries, not taking into account who were living there. The people from same language, same family, living there, they don't mind about that. It was just a, a question of, no, this is good for me. No, give me a little bit more. No, reduce here. And reducing, they were dividing people, families, uh, uh, etc. So the problem of the borders started with the colonization. And up to today, we can't find a, a way to solve the issue uh, because it brought a, it brings a lot of conflict sometimes among countries uh, uh, between Mali and Burkina Faso. It, there was even a war, a war, uh, just to say the border is here, no, the border is there. The situation between Senegal and Mauritania, mm, we are trying to behave like a gentlewoman and gentleman, but the situation is very tense <laughs> up to today because we say that the river Senegal is our border because during the French colonization, Saint Louis was um, the headquarters of the French colonizers for West Africa. And from Saint Louis, they were covering Mauritania and the rest of their colonies in Africa. And the French people say that the, the river, Senegal, is a border. But before that, we did not have problems of border. The people of Senegal in the northern part uh, they can work in, a, uh, in the other side of the river, even there is a movie called on the other side of the river, uh, during the uh, rainy seasons, and people from Mauritania were coming to Senegal with the cattle to find uh, food, uh, etc. There was no problem. But since now we are talking about border, and we say that is a natural border, we have a lot of problems, a lot of conflicts, and even some, sometimes people uh, are uh, killed. And in the 80s, uh, Senegal had a problem with Mauritania, mm -hmm. uh, a dramatic problem, and they were killing each other. Mm -hmm. And the Senegalese people, they killed a lot of Mauritania who were living in, uh, in uh, Senegal. So we have those problems of borders inherited from the colonization. And so the people were moving. So we used to have those movements of people uh, among the continent like that because of the, the, the borders from the colonization. So moving, m migrating at, in those days in Africa, e within, within Africa was something very natural. So there was no problem. We started having problems in the maybe 70s, 80s. B countries like Nigeria, uh, they say that there were too many, many foreigners, African foreigners, uh, in Nigeria because people went there for, because of the oil, they were producing a lot of oil. People were saying that Nigeria is very rich, so people were saying, I'm going to Nigeria. But there were so many in Nigeria that uh, once they put everybody outside, we had that also in Congo Brazzaville. They, uh, sent out many uh, uh, other Africans uh, who went there also for the oil. It is a country, very big country, uh, forest uh, with a lot of resources and not many people uh, in, was living, were living in the Congo. We used to have those kind of problems. But now, when we started facing now the big migration outside Africa to the to Europe, <laughs> uh, the, the, now we can talk about the modern migration. If not in Africa, we still have migration. People are moving a lot, much more within Africa than outside of Africa. People think that all African people are migrating. No, it's a very small little percentage compared to other migrants uh, uh, in, uh, from other parts of the world. Uh, we still have this migration within the continent, still. But we talk about the migration from now Africa uh, to Europe. 
the, what I can say about Senegal, for example, uh, the, the migration, the, we, we used to have types of migration because in the early uh, 20th century, it was uh, the France, our, our colonizer, who asked um, one of our um, politicians, uh, Blaise Diagne, uh, that they need uh, um, soldiers. They need soldiers for the First uh, World War, 1914-1918. So uh, I think that it was Clemenceau, who was in France, asked that Senegalese man, Blaise Diagne, uh, I need 50,000 soldiers from Senegal. And uh, Blaise Diagne sent 71,000, more than what Clemenceau needed. So those 71,000 uh, uh, from Senegal, from Mali, because in those days with the colonization, it was called l'Empire. C'était le Soudan. Soudan, Mali was named Soudan. And Senegal, they called them uh, le Soudan. Uh, even after that, we have problem with Mali, ready for war, but fortunately there was no war. And, uh, uh, and those 71, some of them, of course, they died at the, during the war. Some of them, they came back, and others, they stay. <laughs> and they have wives and stay and become French people. And the second uh, movement of people from uh, mostly all over Africa to go to Europe uh, during the Second World War, uh, uh, all those tirailleurs, called tirailleurs Senegalais, but in fact you have Gabonais, you have Burkinabé, you have Malien, you have Guinean, Senegalais, but all of them were called tirailleurs Senegalais. So some of them died during the Second World War, some of them came back, and some of them stay. <laughs> and uh, from the Second World War up to the 70s, there was no strong migration from Europe. And from Senegal, the problem was in the 70s, the country went through um, a dr drought, Seychelles, drought of seven years. And um, the people couldn't uh, work the, because no rain, the cattle was dying, the people were dying. So we, have, we had the people migrating to Europe, particularly to France because of the language and they were much more used to France as uh, former colonizers. But the men went for migration, they work, and in those days there were no visa also, there were no visa uh, from Senegal, you can go free to France anytime you want. And uh, the men went to work, when they get the money, they return back home. And they were do use, doing that, there was no problem because there was economic migrants, there were jobs for them, they do the work, season job, they do the work, get the money, and go back home. And uh, if they want to return, they return. There is no problem of visa, and go back home. And in the 83s, uh, uh, Mr. Chirac came as president of France, and the Minister of uh, Interior Affairs, who, uh, in Fran France, you say Interior, was Mr. Charles Pasqua. And Mr. Pasqua, he uh, asked Chirac that now we must ask visa uh, because many people are coming, etc., uh, we must now impose visa with our former uh, colonies, Senegal and others. And uh, because France was facing also some economic problems, they say, no, we are going to give the job available to our people instead of giving it to our the foreigners, uh, African people, and the, mm, the mechanization, the machinery, of, for example, kill, cleaning the streets. The African people went there to clean the streets with a broom, like that. But now you have uh, uh, vehicles with a broom. They, they can broom without a human being. So they say the, the broom, <laughs> the machine uh, cleaning the street is better than using a human being. <laughs> anyway, those are the type of considerations. And it is from the visa application that the problem started. Because when the people now, they can reach France, when they enter, they don't want to go out. 
because they say, if I go back home, maybe I'm not going to find a visa to come back again. And they want to bring their families to stay with them because they, they don't have papers, maybe, etc. They want to bring, they start having the problem of family regroupment, bringing family, which is, uh, they wanted to change the politics, no, 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 etc. until now the situation, which is very bad. But now the, those migrations were for economic purposes. Uh, but in the 90s to the 2000s, many students who went to study in France did not want to go back home because they know that there is no job opportunity. So when they finish their studies in France, in Europe, they want to stay and work there instead of going back home. Maybe they are not, they are not going to find a job, or if they are going to find a job, it will not be a, a worthful job, a job which fulfills their expectations, etc. So most of them, they, they stay. Now, uh, these uh, 2018, these last 20, yeah, 15, 20 years, let us say 20 years, we have a big uh, um, migration uh, to Europe, to America, everybody, I have a nephew, he's living now in Washington, D.C. Uh, he went to America and he's now an American citizen living in Washington with a wife and the children, etc. Uh, but th those those migration not for job opportunities or this and that. It is because the country also was facing um, um, politic political problems in terms of democracy, in terms uh, terms of respect of human rights, uh, in terms uh, of conflict, uh, ethnic conflicts, uh, in terms of economic disaster, in terms on a massive rural exod to the big cities, etc. So many people, they say, it is not possible to stay in this country. We have to go. They were trying to find a visa, to find a, a flight, to go somewhere, and from there, and we see that from Senegal, most of so Sub-Saharan Africa, even the northern part of Africa, as a road to now, to have a visa to go to, to the north was completely difficult. With this economic situation also in our countries, people, they say, we are going to take by boat. If we reach the island, the Spanish islands of Canary, because it is not very far from uh, the African coast. If we come to the Il Canary, we will be in Europe. And from there, now we can go to Spain, and from there we go to Europe. But the restrictions were so bad that some of them, they say now, we have to go through uh, Morocco. Uh, we go through Mauritania, uh, Sahara, as the Sahara, Sahrawi country with the conflict was not very sure. So they say, no, it is better to go through Algeri by Algeria to the mountains, and then from there we go to Morocco and find a way to cross, because Morocco is at 14. The city of Tanger is at 14 city, uh, kilometers from the, the south of Europe. Tarifa is just in front of Tanger, 14 kilometers. So it will be easier maybe to find. So Europe put a lot of restriction and gave a lot of money to Morocco, Algeria, to block uh, the passage of migrants coming from sub-Sahara Africa, and even from Morocco also, because they have a lot of migration, uh, uh, Maroc uh, Moroccan, Algerian, all of them, they want to go to Europe. So the sub-Sahara African people, they say, let us go by the east because they have heard that Sudanese, Somalian, people from Eritrea, Djibouti, Ethiopia, they are going through Egypt and go to the desert of Sinai to cross Israel, but they don't want to stay in Israel. Maybe the Ethiopians, because of the, we have uh, Jews from Ethiopia. Uh, maybe if I can go to Turkey and then I reach Greece. If I reach Greece, from Greece, I'm going to uh, western part of Europe. Many people were killed in the desert of Sinai. Many people. The situation is very bad, actually, in Israel, because they took a policy to, to ask people, if you want to go back home, they have thousands, thousands and thousands. We give you uh, 
6,000 euro or 3,000 euro, something like that. If you don't want to go back, we are going to put you in jail. And many of the migrants, they are on strike because they don't want to go back home and they are today in jail. I think the United Nations is uh, asking uh, Israel to be a little bit uh, human with those people, but by the time being, I don't know what is happening. And now the migration we have from Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, so that road was complicated, closed, we don't go by that way. Now we have the desert of the Sahara from Niger, from Mali and Niger. But the Mali actually with the situation at the northern, northern part of Mali, with uh, Al-Qaeda in the Sahara, uh, with the terrorists, with the situation of the rebellion, the, the northern part of Mali is very bad for migrants. Some of them, they are used as uh, uh, terrorists, or they are killed, or they are exploited, etc. And now the, the road is Niger. Niger, uh, the Niger is between uh, Chad, if you have looked at the map, you see Niger. All Africa, from the south, the east, the western part, the central part, all of them, they are gathering in Niger to go to Agadez, because the Agadez is the door of the desert. And from Agadez, trying to find a transportation to go to the south, southern part of Libya, uh, and from there, to, to have access to the Mediterranean, coastal uh, Mediterranean, to have uh, something to cross. Uh, the, 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 the Mediterranean Sea. And this is the drama that we are facing today. How many thousand and thousand, thousand, ten thousand people, young people, young, young people, strong, young, beautiful, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 young people are always beautiful. The, the old ones also, eh? we are trying, eh? <laughs> we are struggling. Eh? <laughs> they, are, they, are, they, are, they are dying in the desert even to, before reaching Libya. But all the time people are saying, oh, the people are dying, the migrants are dying in the Mediterranean Sea. Some of them, they are slaves uh, in uh, Libya. But they don't talk about uh, the migrants who are dead in the desert. Many, many, many of them. And now uh, everybody knows what have happened, uh, what is happening, the chaos in Libya uh, with the terrorists, with the um, milices, uh, with the militants. The situation is so chaotic that we don't know what is happening really. And we know what ha the migrants have met in, uh, in, um, in Libya in time of slavery, uh, slavery exploitation, the racket. Some of them are uh, hired by the terrorists to become terrorists uh, with some money, etc. So this is w what is happening now. And the European people, they are looking ways and means how to do something, etc. But nobody can't stop the migration. But concerning our people in Africa now, the politics vis-a-vis -vis migration, uh, it is any country of Africa, from Morocco to South Africa, from Senegal to Kenya, any country has done anything to stop the migration. Even I am telling, saying them that our leaders, actually, they are very happy with the migration. If somebody can reach a country, because now if you ask young people, where do you want to go? He say, anywhere. I say, but you want to go to France, America, where, where, anywhere. I just want to go. So that is a drama for young people. I want just to go. And because when somebody reaches a country and find a job, a legal one or not legal, mm, yeah, mm, mm, mm. anyway, the person can have a, a revenue. And when you get something, the very first thing to do, you ask where is the money transfer office? Money ground, Western Union, RIA, uh, there are so many, so many to send the money to your family. And the money the migrants are sending all around the world is much more important, one time, two times, three times, five times, 10 times, the amount of the aid 
of developed world for the development of Africa. What the migrants are sending is 10 times much more important. And that money migrants are sending are going to families. That money is sending children to school. That money is giving access to some health care issues. That money is improving the nutrition, what you are eating. The, the, the migrants are having Africa like that, like a baby. Because for our leaders, as they are not doing anything for their populations, because they are busy with corruption, they are busy sending their money to Bahamas, Cayman, Switzerland, or Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, uh, in banks. They are busy of being reelected. They are busy being attached to the power until they are ready even to go surgery to be uh, attached to the the chair of power, I'm not going. Yes, please, call the doctor. Can you tie me with the uh, power? Because, uh, and they, they are not doing for what the people need, just a minimum, a minimum, not a lot, just a minimum of a decent life. Just you can eat, even if it is a one good food, one day to take the children to school, to take to to, to take the children to health care, small health care, primary health care, just the minimum for a decent life for common people. All of us, we we must have access to a minimum of a decent life, a minimum. All human humankind and the animals, my friends, we have all in the trees. We have, we must. It is a, a Jew, something which uh, it must be, a, I don't know, a law that every human man creature, the trees, the animals, the human beings, we must have access to a minimum, a minimum of decent life. And the, the African leaders, None of them, I tell that, you can call them, I say none of them, none, 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 this big continent, none of them is meeting the expectation of their population. So they are happy with that. They are not doing anything. And some European or developed countries, they are giving money to, to block the migration of their people they are not doing anything. They are not providing education. They are not providing training. They are not providing a job. Uh, they are not pro providing leisure. They are not providing a healthy environment. They are not providing uh, culture. Culture, culture, culture is very important. As important as food. It's one, I think culture is most more important than food. Because if you have culture, you're, you are not hungry as somebody who is stupid. Somebody who, who has no culture, he's always eating, eating. Mm, mm, mm. Yo, yo. But if you have culture, you know, your, your head is busy with uh, something else than uh, when you don't have culture. Culture is very important to provide to, to, to the people. We don't have access to all that. How can you live, young people, Without education, without training, without job opportunities, without perspective, only corruption, uh, re-election, uh, keep the power, uh, being in the power forever. It is not possible. So they don't use the money to do anything for those people to stay in their countries. It is not because they don't like their countries. They love Africa. Africa is a country that... You must love. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's big. It's uh, uh, somebody can't say I don't li like Africa. No, it is not possible. Uh, no, 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 no. Everybody loves Africa. Maybe you don't know Africa. You say, oh, where is it? It is hot. It is not hot. <laughs> and so uh, all the young people they like their country. They want to live in their countries. But how can you live in a country in front of the disaster? of the behavior of the African leaders. So they don't have any politi policy or whatever. They are encouraging because the migrants, when they reach somewhere, send the money, this bring a balance. So you don't see the failure 
of our government and our leaders because the, the, the migrants are providing uh, what our leaders had to do. So this is a problem. So they say if the problem, there is no more migration, uh, I think that uh, many of our African leaders, uh, we will return to those days in um, conflicts, in wars, in genocides, and whatever can happen. But the, I always say that the African people, we know that they have failed, but the responsibility of the, the countries, the Western countries, Europe, America, uh, where the migrants want to, they have to take their responsibilities, not talking about the migrants, uh, addressed to the migrants, but addressed to their, the leaders of their countries. The leaders, the governments who are not doing anything for their people, putting their people in such situation, uh, I think that they, the, the developed world must do something and change relationships with those countries who are, which are not well um, uh, led by good uh, leaders, but the problem also is that many developed countries uh, they can't uh, oblige uh, our leaders because they have economic interests in the continent. Because uh, the African continent is the continent where you have everything. You have uh, look at the waters. We have the Mediterranean Sea. We have the Atlantic Ocean. We have the uh, Indian Ocean. We have the Red Sea. We have everything in Africa, and all over uh, you have uh, gas, you have oil, you have fish, you have uh, uh, diamonds, you have cobalt, Guinea Conakry, a small country, one of the ah, uh, they say Marie, to you talk too much. <laughs> uh, maybe my glasses are not good. Marietu, you talk too much. It is time for questions now. <laughs> now. So, <laughs> thank you. No, I'm joking. She said it is just time for questions. And uh, many countries they are interested in the in our resources, in our cobalt, rutile, etc. So they they are protecting some stupid leaders, so they can exploit our resources, make our people poor for a continent which is so rich, and rich for the future, not rich for, Africa is important for the, for the future. And now, we used to have our former colonizers, the Western world, but now we have China coming. China is really in Africa, exploiting, not dealing with what is happening. You can die or, that is, it is not our problem. We need our resources. We have Turkey, Tur Turkey. Turkey, Turkey, Turkey. When I was living, the president of Turkey is, is, is in Senegal. Uh, we have uh, India. India also is coming slowly. But China is really the, the big uh, grappling. So they are interested in our resources. And they are not interested in the people. So if you are not interested in the people, how can you solve the problems of the people? So that is, I'm going to stop because I'm asked to ask the question so I can continue uh, to talk about. Thank you so much. Merci. <laughs> uh, de rien. Um, we'd like to thank Kem Bougou for her, her remarks. And before we turn to questions, uh, we wanted to really quickly thank the Kennedy Center and the uh, Department of Africana Studies um, for, for sponsoring this event. Um, quick reminder that tomorrow, Kim Bougul will be speaking again on the um, situation of women in Senegal. That will be sponsored by the Women's Studies Program as well. Um, that will be at the same time in the basement of the JFSB, room 92. Uh, thank you once more, and I think, questions? Questions. <laughs> We have some time for questions, and if you will come to the microphone here, state your name and your major if you're a BYU student, and then people who are listening and, and watching later will, will know um, who you are. Thank you. 
Hi, Ms. Bogul. My name is Hamilton Brotherton. I'm studying political science. Um, I actually served in Bennett and Togo, mm -hmm. so uh, I've, I've seen a lot of what you've been talking about. And so you talked about how immigrants sending back money is what is really helping the people <laughs> and that the foreign aid that other countries sends does nothing. What would you change, um, say, for the United States? How could we send money so that it is used effectively and not for corrupt reasons? Yeah. Thank you. I think that uh, countries even don't, the aid is not in terms of money. Not only money, not only cash. Uh, it is in some programs, uh, etc. And uh, when it comes, uh, they don't know in um, which areas we need that aid. Sometimes it is politically used. For example, somebody wants to be a member of the parliament can use the aid from the United States to dig a stupid uh, dwell in his village uh, and with caskets, uh, thank you, America, with T-shirt, thank you, America, because it is just for demagogic purposes because they want to be elected next. And the rest of the aid is in their pocket or used for themselves. So even that's why I say stop the aid. Okay. The aid must be stopped. You can't say, since uh, uh, the 1960s that many of our countries, we are independent from our colonizers, m almost 60 years, we are always talking about aid for development in Africa. And how can another country uh, help a continent? And how a country can help another country in its own development, which must be done according to its own realities and needs. It is what we need, our reality. Uh, my reality is not to put this. In Africa, I'm uh, oops, you know, living like that because it is not cold in Senegal. And now, this day, a little bit, uh, 16, 17, when I was living. But usually it is warm, 25, 35 degrees. What we need to eat? We eat yam, we eat our green leaves. We, uh, we miss our smells, our smoked fish, our smoked oysters. We don't eat fresh oysters. We have a lot of oysters in Senegal, but they are smoked oysters. And we, what we need, but the aid of development is not coming for that. The aid of development, because it is from a country to a country, because the aid is a government to another government. And when it is from a government to another government, they don't take the population's uh, what they need because it is a governmental uh, affair. United Nations, all of them, they are governmental and it is government to government. Some NGOs, some, not all, all of them because mm -mm, these days we don't talk much about NGOs because they are doing bad things. But some NGOs, non-governmental organization or some associations, even the associations are better who are going to Africa or Latin America or Asia and being in touch with the people, asking for their needs and with their collaboration and their local expertise, do something to improve something. And when they leave, the others can continue. But if you say, add to development, you bring machines. When you go, we don't know even how to switch it off. And when it, there is a little uh, problem, oh, how to repair it? Because we don't know it. We have not uh, done that machine. So I say, Ed, stop. Because if we stop it, even though we, are, we will go through some troubles, but after the troubles, the situation will be more clear because we will put our, the responsibilities of our leaders just now, naked, now, no more Ed. What do you do for your people now? I think that that is very important. Mm -hmm. So stop and will that to add of development. immigrants to keep sending money back home? No. If the migrants don't send money back home, they need not to stay in the country. 
because they they migrate for that okay. but to find the money to send. If proper aid is given, will there still be a necessity for them to send money back home? Uh, no, proper aid must be must be now um, prepared on new basis. How it is uh, going to be given and appli applique uh, mm -hmm. on the field mm -hmm. uh, according to the needs of the people uh, and follow up and follow, check. If we did that like that, the aid is uh, oriented in that new way, uh, you will see less migrants from Africa. Thank you. You are very welcome. We know people need to leave for their other classes, but we do have time for one or two more questions. Bonjour. Bonjour. Je viens de Tahiti, donc uh, je vais poser mes questions en français and then Pas. in English as well, so that everyone... Oui, oui, je comprends mieux le français. <laughs> Mon anglais, je me débrouille un peu, mais... <laughs> <laughs> Merci beaucoup pour votre, votre, votre message pour nous et, et vos explications. Ma première question euh, est, est plutôt simple. Qu'aimeriez-vous que les jeunes ici en Amérique et aussi en, en Europe euh, comprennent de l'Afrique quel, quel, quel est le, le message que vous aimeriez leur, leur donner Et la deuxième question est qu'est-ce que nous pouvons faire en tant que jeunes ici à l'université, et que ce soit ici en Amérique ou en Europe pour aider uh, de quelconque manière en Afrique. So I'll ask that in English now. Um, so my first question is, um, my name is Emmanuel Riles. I'm studying international relations. Um, what, what do you wish uh, young people in America and Europe uh, would know about Africa? Uh, what would be your message for them? And the second question would be, what can we do as young people to, to help in any ways? Merci beaucoup. Thank you. I have to answer in French or in English? <laughs> English. Oh. <laughs> uh, <coughs> thank you. Very important uh, questions. I'm particularly very much interested in young people. Um, uh, for the young, young, young people in uh, America or in Europe, uh, of young people for into brackets developed countries, uh, Western world or whatever, uh, is al already first to open to open their minds themselves to the rest of the world to know what is happening in universities they must teach about other countries uh, Africa Latin America Asia and it is important you have the GFK center here, you have uh, global women's studies, you have African studies, you have uh, uh, the humanities in French, francophone literature. It is a small window opened, but we have to widen it to make it a big door, and then even to remove the door, just to, to uh, flow into the rest of the world. It is important to know, because most of the time, the medias or the information we are collecting are not reflecting the reality in the continent, particularly for Africa, I know Africa. Uh, it's not the reality. Most of the information on Africa are almost uh, cliches, old uh, considerations, uh, cliches or stereotypes, uh, but they don't talk about Africa. But l like I'm coming here, maybe probably you'll come to Africa, traveling to Latin America as a country, to be in touch with the people. I think that the young people are the resources the world need to change the things for tomorrow. So the institutions, uh, the universities, the young people themselves, uh, uh, they must open themselves to know what is happening in the world. Most of the time I say, it is good to have your remote control, your button, your push, push, everything. Yeah. You order here, chuck, chuck, boop, this, the pizza is coming, chuck, the door is open, chuck. Uh, you know, you think that you are happy. No, 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 no. You can't be happy in a world where there are many unhappy. It is not possible. So to think a little bit about that, 
what is happening these days? Why we see all these frustrations from the world? Why for all this anger? Why all this hunger? Why all these children dying? All these women dying? It is not possible. They say Africa still uh, maternal and childhood who, childhood death is still so big in Asia. What is the problem? What is except to open? yourself to that and to read. It is good reading books from Africa. Uh, novels, there are novels to watch cinema, African cinema. You have very good, important movies uh, to look for information on Africa and to make up your mind and think in terms of uh, ethics that it is not possible that I have eaten and my neighbor did not eat. It is a question of ethic. And pay attention to the destruction of the environment in the world, uh, even in America, but particularly in our continent. You know, Gabon, you see Gabon there? Gabon, after Amazonia, is the second ecosystem of the world. But now the Chinese is destroying the ecosystem of Gabon uh, to 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 take the manganese, there are even some rivers. Even they are turning the destroying villages, ancestors, etc. For the manganese, uh, uh, and the ecosystem of Gabon is covering Africa, but it's covering also a big part of the world, like Amazonia. The destruction of the environment, but the mostly the waste. You see, I think that in America, people, they eat too much, they drink too much, they sleep too much, their bed are too nice, the windows are, the curtains are too nice. And when you come to a house today, you come back next year, they have changed the window, the curtains, they changed the, the furniture. I said, last year when I came, it was uh, red uh, furniture, uh, armchair. <laughs> oh, we changed. Ah, bon? It was good. Why do you change it? They change the car. They change the smartphone. Why, young people, are you interested in the next Galaxy, in the next Samsung, in the next Apple, with uh, this octet, with this uh, uh, telephone? It's just you put a number. Hello, Ken Bugul, how are you? OK, when are you coming? OK, we are waiting for you. Bye, ciao. Finish. Why do you ch change the smartphone every six months? And those are the system. It's taking the money, and their pockets are big of full of money, and don't don't want to know where to put the money. And while you 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 are uh, like a, um, conditioned, you can't live without the, the next the next smartphone of Apple or Samsung Galaxy. I don't know uh, to think that. You make up your mind. Say, what is life? What is I'm here for? What to give a sense? to the, the life, to give, and you will not be boring, you will not be frustrated, you will feel much more happier because you are thinking of the others. I think that the new generations, they must think of a better world for everybody. If there is a better world for everybody, there will be no problem. And countries who are complaining about migration, if we have access to education, a minimum of education, a minimum of uh, health, a minimum of, uh, uh, when we are even healthy, educated, we can have our own business. Uh, we need not to find a job from the government. We can have, a, 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 you will see less migration because we are, the migrants are not happy abroad. African migrants, they are not happy abroad. The best place to live is in Africa. But it is the situation is difficult. So the young people must think of that. Your Department of Women's Studies, Global Women's Studies, African Studies must uh, put emphasis, reinforce the knowledge uh, of, of the rest of the world and organize even uh, some travels, some exchange programs for stu students to travel to Africa or Latin America or to the rest of the world. I think that the, 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 the future of the world is in the hands of the new generation. Not in my hands. Me, I'm an old lady. I'm trying. I have done. I'm still doing. But uh, my time is finished. It is your time, the young people. Thank you very much.